So in today's video, we're gonna go over an upgrade that we made to our A-frame camper to enable us to have a lot more storage using some very simple parts from Ikea and some very amateur sewing skills. So feel free to sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So this is our Rockwood A-frame camper that we've had for several years. And the one thing that we've always had a problem with is it's got great exterior storage, but the interior storage is seriously lacking. Basically, you've got the micro cabinet. There's a small amount of storage underneath the sink and one of the benches, as well as underneath the bed, if you can manage to lift it up. Since it's just me and my wife most of the time in this camper, we decided to do a few things. First, we took out the really heavy table that's in there for the dinette and replaced it with a table that we found at Ikea that was smaller and a lot lighter. And next, just like the table, we turned our eyes to Ikea for our storage solution. And this is where my wife, Tara, will help explain what we've done. All right, now we're in our Rockwood A192 high wall A-frame camper. And I'm sitting in what is typically the area for the built-in dinette system. You'll notice that we've removed not only the original table, but also all of the cushions um, that came with the camper. And we've already started to install our storage solution. So the main elements of our storage solution really come down to Ikea cabinets and basic pine rails. We're doing all of our install with magnets, um, mostly because the bench opposite me has all of the camper's core mechanicals. Um, so both our hot water and our furnace live down there. And we wanna make sure that anything we put in for storage, we can easily remove. So we're gonna do a little bit of a close up into how we installed our kind of one by four pine beams. Uh, so these beams are just attached with really simple wood screws. Uh, we pre-drilled the holes. There's four, one in each corner, um, mostly so that, you know, with a simple electrical drill, we could pop these out if we ever needed to get back into the mechanicals. The other things that you're gonna notice, um, we have a very simple piece of artificial trim that we've attached with um, a brad nail gun. And then our main anchoring mechanism are just neodymium magnets. So we'll have links to both types of magnets that we've used for this install um, in the links below. Both the magnets and the trim really help these cabinets hold in place. They're fairly lightweight, but once they're in there, they kind of lock in place. The other thing we have are these bar magnets, which fit very nicely in between each of the cabinets to kind of lock them each to each other. These magnets basically slide into existing grooves of these cabinets and really make them secure. Along with the trim holding them up front, these just stay in really well. The last piece we've got with the metal cabinets is the piece here on the end. This was using one of the leftover shelves from inside the cabinets and I simply used a pair of pliers to bend the corner to make it flush against the wall and then we drilled two holes into it to attach it so that way it's flush and, and it gives the appearance of it being part of the rest of the built-in. The last piece we have to do is take the cushions and remove one of the sections. The way it worked out because of the width of the cabinets, we just have to remove one of these panels and the cushions should then fit perfectly. Good thing for us, we've got our supervisors Pop-Tart and Udon here to make sure that all of things go to plan. We're gonna start by removing some of the stitching so that way we can utilize as much of the existing cushion as possible. We basically want these end pieces intact so that way we can use them to attach to the cushion again. So we just rip all these seams and remove the single panel that we have to. This 
This is one of the more tedious processes, but luckily we've got Udon over here to make sure that Tara is doing a good job. Okay, once we have the panel free, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the bottom layer of the fabric. This is kind of just excess that we need to remove and remove a little bit of this end panel. It's always awkward when your supervisors fight. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is basically I'm gonna try to follow the existing stitching on these panels. One problem I ran into is that these stitches before were not perfect. So they were not perfect after I finished. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clip all of these down with some fabric clips. I prefer these over needle just because they're a lot easier to add and remove. So this was my first time really trying to sew anything like this. I've done some basic fabrics in the past, but nothing recently. We had a heavy duty needle added to this sewing machine and man, it handled everything like a champ. I just went through all of these cushions and we turned them inside out and I just followed each one of the existing seams that were there and reattached the end panels that were on these. The only other thing I did differently was for the zippers. I took some of the scrap fabric and clamped it down on top of the zipper and then I sewed over the zipper to attach the fabric to it so that way the zipper wouldn't run off the edge of the track. This was a little scary doing this on the machine even with the heavy duty needle but it did a really good job and we had no problems getting the zipper sealed like this. There we go, one cushion down, one panel removed. Just three more to go. The zipper works just fine and doesn't run off the track. And this is what it looks like next to its counterpart. We wanted to keep this video as concise as possible so we're not gonna show the other cushions, but if there's any questions you have, about any of the stuff you've seen in this video so far, feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you. Once we finish the other cushions, the managers come in to inspect our work and then we're ready to put them in the camper. So here we've got one cushion in. Two cushions. cushions and our last one by far one of my favorite aspects of this project was the fact that it all came in under $200 the most expensive piece were the three IKEA cabinets coming to a total of $120. Um, so overall, this is definitely worth the investment. If you have any questions or anything else you'd like to see in future videos, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. And hey, if you want to help out the channel, go ahead and smash that like button. Feel free to subscribe and hope to see everyone next time.